Welcome to Electro Online. Now that we're going to talk about the atmosphere of Mercury, the question comes up, what determines if a planet will have an atmosphere or not? Well, it turns out there are three factors. Two are the main factors, and then there's the third factor, and all three do play a role in the case of Mercury. The two main factors are temperature and gravity. The third factor is whether or not the planet has a magnetic field so that it can be protected from the solar wind. But let's take a look at the first two factors. Because temperature affects the speed at which the molecules in the atmosphere, atmosphere will move. The hotter it gets, the faster they move. Now, a planet which is closer to the sun will be warmer and therefore the molecules in the atmosphere will move faster. The second main factor is gravity. If there's a stronger gravity, the planet will pull more forcefully on the molecules in the atmosphere and will prevent them from escaping. So it's kind of a toss or a kind of a, a fight between the temperature, the higher the temperature, the more likely they'll have a higher speed to get away from the planet, and the greater the gravitational force, the more likely they will stay. So here we have a graph that depicts the relationship between increased gravity versus increased temperature. There's a line that goes diagonally across, and notice that if any planet falls on this side of the diagonal line, there will not be an atmosphere. And any planet, or a moon, or asteroid for that matter, that falls on this side of the line will have an atmosphere. Again, to the right means increased gravity, and to compare the four inner planets, Earth, Venus, Mars, and Mercury, Notice that Mars, Venus, and Earth have a strong enough gravity, they're far enough to the right, for them to have an atmosphere. Notice that Mars is very close to the line, and therefore the atmosphere, even though there is one there, it's not nearly as thick as the atmospheres of the Earth and Venus. Notice Mercury does not have a strong enough gravitational field, and therefore it does not have an atmosphere. I said, well, wait a minute, didn't you just say that Mercury has an atmosphere? Well, it has kind of what we would call a temporary captured atmosphere. In other words, materials are captured that are temporarily there, but then eventually will leak off into space. And the difference between having no atmosphere at all and having a tiny amount of atmosphere like Mercury has is simply that whatever molecules are there are just temporarily there and will eventually leave the planet. So if you were to sit in my class and you were to answer the question, does Mercury have an atmosphere? And you answered no, that would be correct in my book. And if you were to say, well, yes, it does, well, I'll have to call it correct as well, because you can argue that, yes, indeed, you know, there's a tiny amount of atmosphere on Mercury. We'll get into more details there. Well, the second factor, temperature, notice that the closer the planet is to the sun, the warmer it gets, the warmer it gets, the faster the molecules move. So the molecules will move faster on Mercury because it's closer to the sun, faster on Venus compared to the Earth, but not as fast as on Mercury, and Mars, of course, the molecules would move slower because it is colder. And just for comparison, we threw in the moon Titan, because Titan does have an atmosphere, it's the only moon in the solar system that does, and the reason is that it's a large enough moon, so therefore enough gravity, and it's far enough away from the sun, so it's cold enough, so that, yes, indeed, under the rules, it can have an atmosphere, and indeed, it does. Now, the third factor, of course, is the magnetic field, and if there's no magnetic field, and Mercury's magnetic field is fairly weak, then the solar wind can impact into the planet, and the solar wind particles can actually rip portions, portions of the atmosphere away and send it off into space, because they come in at very high velocities, they impact the particles in the atmosphere, and they could potentially rip off and, and get rid of some of that atmosphere as well. So there's a factor there as well, which also affects Mercury. But the general principle of the molecules in the atmosphere is as follows. We have what we call the Seffen-Boltzmann distribution of velocities. In other words, the velocities of the molecules in the atmosphere depend upon the temperature, but they all don't have the exact same velocity. 
because the interaction between the molecules, some get bumped into higher speeds, some get bumped to lower speeds, so there's a distribution of speeds. And the three main velocities we typically deal with is the most probable velocity, the velocity that occurs with the most molecules, so n represents the number of molecules with that velocity. Then we have what we call the average velocity. If you add up all the velocities of all the molecules and divide by the number of molecules, you get the average or the mean. And then we have what we call the RMS, the root mean square velocity, which is kind of like the effective velocity of the molecules in the atmosphere. We can calculate the root mean square velocity using this equation. And just for an example, on the Earth, with the oxygen molecule, which has a molar mass of 32 grams per mole, we can see that the speed, a typical RMS speed for the oxygen molecule on the Earth at room temperature is about 395 meters per second. Now, what dictates that a molecule will actually leave the atmosphere and leave the planet? Well, if a molecule moves at a speed greater than the escape speed and doesn't bump into any other molecules to slow down or to stop it, and it's able to get off into space, if it has a velocity greater than the escape speed, it will indeed leave the planet. So, the rule of thumb is that the fastest molecules in the atmosphere of a planet move at a speed of about six times the root mean square velocity. Okay? And if that six times the root mean square velocity is greater than the escape speed, then the molecules can escape. And here we have kind of a diagram that shows that if this is the escape speed and a very small number of the molecules move faster than that because it's hot enough and there's not enough gravity and the escape velocity is not very big, then the molecules can escape. Once those molecules are gone, the whole distribution will resettle itself and will always keep a certain number of these molecules past escape speed and they will continue to leave the planet. And over the billions and billions of years, because the solar system is about four and a half billion years old, the molecules will simply disappear and the atmosphere will leave off into space, leaving Mercury virtually nothing left. And so that's the key. Temperature, gravity, and to a third degree, to some degree, the magnetic field as well. And we'll get into that a little bit more with Mercury. So Mercury was simply not big enough, so therefore it didn't have a strong enough gravitational field. It was close, too close to the sun, so the temperature was so hot that the molecules moved really fast, and they just simply escaped into space. And that's what, def what defines and determines whether or not a planet will have an atmosphere.